appreciate you guys supporting the channel. And if you want to do so financially, uh, be sure to check out my Patreon. The link will be in the description. Because all the support, whether it's financial or just you guys even just subbing and liking my videos does mean a lot to me. So without further ado, let's get into the guide. Just like the street lights lit this time like a fire in a blaze got a burn it down Hey guys, so there are going to be three uh, major points that we're going to discuss today in this guide and that is going to be how to position yourself defensively. So we're going to go over that and what that actually entails. The next point that we're going to be talking about is how to position yourself offensively. So it's going to be on the opposite end of the spectrum, but it is important that we look at this so you do get the complete picture when it comes to positioning. The next and the most important point is going to be Finding the balance between um, positioning yourself offensively and defensively so that way you guys can really elevate your gameplay because you could be an amazing uh, defensive, defensive position healer or you can be amazing at playing offensively in uh, terms of your positioning. But if you don't know how to find the balance between the both of those, you aren't going to elevate your game to the next level. So that is going to be the final point that we're going to talk about. And without further ado, we're going to jump into this first point, which is how to position yourself defensively. Hey guys, so in this clip I'm going to be playing Enhanced Shaman, Wrestle Shaman, um, Boomkin against RMP. Now it's really important for me as a healer to position myself defensively the majority of the time against this team because even though we do have lots of stops with two shears and two groundings, it's super easy for them to get across on my Enhanced Shaman. So that makes my positioning even more important and actually making sure that my positioning is correct throughout the game as well. So that's why as you guys can see, we got the Rogue out of Stealth. So I toss a root on him just to prevent him from getting that re-stealth and then where am I? I'm right by the pillar the whole entire time because if I'm out in the open it is going to make it a lot easier for the other team to you know get a fear on me or get a free polymorph. So when you're playing against RMP it's important that you really coordinate your stops with your team. That way you're, you don't overlap anything and you can extend the game a lot longer and if you're able to extend the game when you play a comp that does better in dampening, your chances of winning are going to go up significantly. So that's why right here I didn't use my shear or grounding because my enhanced shaman, he said that he was going to stop the poly and he did. So there are going to be a lot of things I need to be aware of right now in this situation in order to determine uh, the optimal position. That is going to be the enemy cooldowns that have just been used, uh, where the mage is and where the priest is. So if we look in the middle of my screen, I know they want to do something really quickly because the priest just used dark and the rogue just used step and he stepped in my boomy. So when I'm thinking about CC, I know the only CC that the rogue could do to me, which is range, is going to be that blind. And I know he's not going to use that just yet because I am DR'd on DB. So I have to be aware of the mage and the priest. It's important to remember that you can still position yourself defensively while being in the line of the enemies. You just have to be smart about it. I am out there because I still have three stops. You can see here, wind shear, grounding, and my panda racial. However, as soon as I use my shear, I'm immediately switching up my position and getting closer to that pillar. Fast forward into the match a little bit, and it doesn't appear to be the best situation for us right now. My Boomkin's at 40k health um, with Vendetta on him, and I don't have any stops for the mage right now. So getting CC on me uh, would be very detrimental. So since I don't have any stops for the mage, you can see where is my position right now. I am on the one side of the pillar, and the mage is on the complete opposite side of the pillar. So that completely takes them out of the equation, and I do not have to worry about getting sheeped for now or at least until my grounding comes up in 3 seconds. Now I see the priest being a speedy boy and he comes racing in. So I know that he is going to fear because why else would he just push in like that. So I drop tremor and thankfully I do pre-tremor the fear. So now I see the mage is starting to push in so I, the boomy and I begin to reposition. 
So a helpful tip I can give everyone that's watching this when it comes to positioning yourself defensively is always try to have a barrier between you and the opposing DPS or healer that can actually CC you. So what I mean by that is it should be the enemy team followed by someone from your team and then it should be yourself. You want someone on your team to kind of be that last line of defense uh, which is going to make it a lot more challenging for the other team to actually push up and get CC. As uh, kind of shown here, you can see that my enhance is way up there um, attacking the enemy team and then it goes the mage and then who's in front of the mage? It's my boomy. So in order to get to me, the mage actually has to get through the boomy, has to get through his clones and everything um, to actually CC me and then if he gets through the boomy, then he has to go through my stops. So it's just little things like that will make it a lot more challenging for the opposing team to actually get CC on you. We just touched the defensive aspect of positioning to hopefully provide you with a better understanding of what that actually entails if you are struggling with that particular aspect. Now we are swinging towards the opposite side of the spectrum, offensive positioning. You may be asking what's the difference between offensive and defensive positioning and how that translates to gameplay. It's actually pretty simple. So defensive positioning is a lot more proactive. So you go in with a really defined plan and strategy. So it's a lot more scripted because of that because you know if X, Y, or Z happens, then you know how to respond and you thought of this ahead of time. So in that way, it's a lot safer because um, you play very textbook because of that. So you avoid a lot of risks by playing defensively. So now if we touch on offensive positioning, um, offensive positioning is a lot more reactive. Um, you know, you may go in there with a general plan, but every game is going to be different. You really do fly by the seat of your pants. And because of that, you have to adjust to every situation accordingly, which means it's a lot less scripted. And because of that, since you're actually being offensive, you're going in there, you're being aggressive. It's a lot of high risk, high reward situations. So you could go in there, you're, you could get punished from the opposing team. But if you are able to make a really awesome play because you aren't just hiding behind a pillar the whole entire game, it does have the opportunity to maybe swing an entire match for you. So against this team, I'm playing Enhanced Shaman, Resto Shaman, Arms Warrior against an RMP. And our strategy is to just run at this priest the whole entire game because we know the longer the game goes on, the you know worst chance we have at actually getting the W and winning this match. So there we are, we're running in as a unit. I'm not just gonna sit by a pillar, I wanna get in there, make plays, and actually run this priest down. And every that happens is gonna be really reactive. So I get corroded by the rogue, I don't think that I'm just gonna panda him in the opener, but I end up doing that. And so I'm really adjusting my gameplay on the fly. So since offensive positioning is gonna be a lot more reactive kind of game style, you can see that I'm playing off script. The rogue doesn't use Vendetta, but I still drop my totem because I want to keep us offensive, I want to keep us in there and just spamming damage and I want to be able to help and actually contribute to the kill. And you know, since you are playing um, more offensively as opposed to defensively, you are going to be opened up to a lot more swaps by the opposing team. Because you know how we talked about earlier, your teammates are going to act as those barriers in between the DPS. But when you're in the middle of the map and everyone's clumped together, uh, it is going to be a lot easier for them to actually swap to you. So that's why they're going me right here with all their cooldowns. For the most part, uh, Turbo, you do kind of play scripted. You know, you run in there, maybe you fear the healer instantly and you stun the DPS and you go ham. But since we're playing off script, my warrior decides to use his fear as a peel so I don't die in this stun. And when you play offensively, you are going to be opened up to getting CC a lot easier because you don't actually have that pillar to fall back on. And if like someone wants to fear you, they can just fear you because you're on top of them. So if you want to like try to pre-tremor fears, it does become a lot more difficult. But thankfully, I do get the pre-tremor there. And then the priest eventually just falls over. And you know, again, we are playing off script there. I normally save trinket for blind against an RMP. But I get polyed half and I'm thinking, no, I just want to spam purge and actually net us a kill. So now I'm just going to play this clip for you guys in regular time. So you can kind of see the communication that my team and I uh, actually go through. Uh, so you can see how we make little adaptations, little adjustments. And now it really is like on the fly. 
I'm, I have like a quarter of a brain though, so. Aw, oh, dude, I'm jealous of the, the ruthless elite on your shaman. That looks fucking sexy. Yeah, that was before you were good, Noah. Idiot. Yeah, yeah nah, I'm just gonna rat. Okay, I rooted them out. Big damage on Priest. You should stun, I'm spam right. purging him. I'm yeah, groated. Awesome. I, I padded Rogue's opener, he's pissed. Yeah. Kick mage, kick mage. I'll pre tremor fear. I'm stunned, I have tremor down, I have tremor down. Nice. I saw I saw tremor down, so he can't I pre tremored it. I just turned nothing. Oh, nice, really. Not bad for I sure. Them, I them. You're next. Yeah, I'll get next, I'll get next. I just pulled your root because I like you more than Nick. I'm spam purging every global, every global, yeah, yeah, every global. Yeah, yeah, every I train to purge, I train, I'm training to purge, I'm training to purge. You both you purge, I think. So? Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Uh, a little bit high, a little bit low. How far can we get? And now we have the culmination of both these aspects. This is why we needed to go over some of the basics of defensive and offensive positioning. You can have a good balance between the both of them if you do not understand one or the other. If you can find the balance between both of these aspects we have discussed, it will truly elevate your gameplay to the next level. Remember, practice both aspects. Practice when to be defensive and when to actually push in to make a play. Once you have mastered both of these aspects, the last step, Finding the balance between both of them will come naturally to you. Good luck in arenas, my friends, and thanks for watching.